If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try the question on your own before moving on. Oftentimes in physics problems, we need to break the problem down into two or even more than two phases. And in this case, we're going to see that there are two stages or two phases to this problem. In phase one of the problem, we have the stuntman falling 23 meters from rest to reach a final velocity. And in phase two, the stuntman is stopped in 0.9 meters to reach a final velocity of zero meters per second. We're going to explore phase one of the problem first. So as noted, in phase one of the problem, we have the stuntman, who is represented by this little square, who initially has a velocity of zero meters per second. He then falls 23 meters and achieves a final velocity that we do not know. Now you'll notice that we have defined the downward direction as the positive y direction. So that's an important convention that we need to keep in mind. Now we can easily calculate the final velocity of the stuntman by using the following equation from kinematics. Notice that because the initial velocity is zero, that this term here will cancel out of the equation, so we can simplify it. We can then take the square root of both sides of the equation so that we can solve for v. Now the acceleration of the stuntman would be equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, that is the acceleration due to gravity. Notice that we're calling it positive 9.8 because we have defined once again the downward direction as being positive. The displacement in the y direction, or delta y, will be positive 23 meters. So we can plug in the displacement as well as the acceleration and that will allow us to calculate the final velocity. And when we plug it in and simplify it on our calculators, we should get a final velocity of approximately 21.23 meters per second. That is the final velocity of the stuntman as he reaches the bottom of the 23 meters. Now, before we move on to phase two, we want to keep in mind the following idea, which is the key to solving this question. The final velocity of phase one, which we just calculated, will become the initial velocity of phase two. So we're going to take this 21.23 meters per second and we will use it as the initial velocity for phase two of the question. So now on to phase two, in which the stuntman is falling 0.9 meters to a final velocity of zero meters per second. Notice that we have now called the final velocity zero meters per second. Also notice that we changed the displacement to 0.9 meters. Now, in this case, the acceleration will not be 9.8 meters per second squared. Why not? Well, it's because the stuntman is not in free fall during phase two. He is colliding with a set of mattresses, so he is no longer falling freely through the sky. So we actually need to find the acceleration for phase two. Luckily, we can use the same formula that we used earlier, but this time we're going to calculate the acceleration. To solve for the acceleration, we can first subtract the initial velocity squared from both sides of the equation. We could next divide both sides of the equation by two delta y. Now on the right side, the two delta y will cancel, and that's going to leave the acceleration on the right side. We can now plug in all the known values for phase two of the problem. Remember the final velocity was zero meters per second. And when we plug in the known values and compute the acceleration, we get approximately negative 250.44 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration. We'll notice that the acceleration is negative. It's pointing in the upward direction using our sign convention. Now we're only one step away from calculating the force exerted by the mattress on the stuntman. And that last part will involve a free body diagram of the stuntman as the mattresses are bringing him to rest. There are two forces acting on the man. We have the downward gravitational force, Fg, and then the upward force that the mattress is exerting on the stuntman. Now, according to Newton's second law, we know the net force acting on the man is equal to the mass times the acceleration. We just found the acceleration in the previous part of the problem. We also know the mass of the stuntman. For the net force, we have to plug in both forces. Let's not forget that downward was chosen to be the positive direction and upward would therefore be the negative direction. So we have entered those into the formula. We can subtract Fg from both sides of the equation so that we isolate Fm. 
and then we can divide both sides of the equation by negative 1 so that we truly isolate Fm. We also recall that Fg can be replaced with Mg, and now we can plug in all the known values. And when we simplify that, we can see that the force that the mattress is exerting on the man is approximately equal to 19,518 newtons. And that is indeed the correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Also, you are welcome to send in additional questions to this email address on the screen, and I will do my best to post a video solution to them.